Hi, I'm Frank Scarcello, and you're watching Frank Conversations at Thunder Bay Live. And uh, pleased to have as my guest today, Mayor Keith Hobbs. Thank, Thank you, Keith, you. for coming in. Yeah, my pleasure. And um, I have a bunch of questions for you, so Great. we'll get right to it. We'll try to keep it uh, keep the, the the interview as short as possible because we want people to watch it, of course. <laughs> so, in the rearview mirror, you have the the city budget. How did you feel that the city budget, the process went, and were you happy with the result? Well, I could live with the result. I uh, said when we took the vote, I voted against it for the first time uh, ever. Uh, I voted for five budgets previous to this okay. one. I voted against budget because we were at 1.58% and I wanted to uh, stay there and give uh, the taxpayers a little bit of a pause. Okay. Um, so I wasn't uh, entirely happy, but I could live with 2.1 because it's around inflation. Uh, municipal inflation rates running around 3% for municipalities, but um, the CPI um, uh, was around okay. a little less than two, so 1.58 would have been ideal. Uh -huh. um, but we'll live with it. I mean, we put in extra infrastructure spending. Uh, if you take away what we're putting into infrastructure uh, over and above, um, our tax increases for the last six years would have been around 1.5%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But we're trying to fix up our roads, albeit this time of year you don't see it, right. with all the potholes, but um, we are working on major, major infrastructure. Okay. Now, I think some, some critics will say that um, we, we're not attacking the operating budget that much. You know, if we really were, if, do, you, do, you, do you feel that uh, that's something that um, the city should be working on in terms of, you know, let's face it, it's a business, you got expenses, you got uh, revenue. Revenue is, 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 is hard to come by, right? Expenses, you know, at what point do we start having a serious conversation about operating you know um, yeah. I mean we're doing that Frank on an ongoing basis um, if you look at Tim Camisso found 5.6 million dollars mm -hmm. in the last four years in efficiencies I've tasked Norm Gale our new city manager to do the same thing we always have to be vigilant and mm -hmm. always spend taxpayers dollars but we need to bring in industry into this city mm -hmm. we've lost 20 percent of our industrial mm -hmm. tax base um, you know with, with the um, uh, impact and the resolute mill and the Green, uh, green elevators being uh, reclassified to commercial. We lost a lot of money there. OMPF funding yeah, uh, from the bad province. Luck. We, we've had a, some real hits and yeah. uh, Thunder Bay needs a win. So we're working with hard with CEDC to bring in uh, more business so that we can build up our tax base. And I think that's the way we have to go, but we can't stop looking at efficiencies. Absolutely, you know, uh, revenue, uh, extra revenue, is, is would 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 solve all of our problems, Definitely. right? You know, Definitely. but if 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 if, if, if the revenue is, is is not there, or if, and it's nobody's fault, just the fact of the, the way the economy is, we you know we should look at both sides. Anyway, I'm, I'm meeting with the Chinese China Rail tomorrow mm -hmm. in the KWG. I've met with Norant Resources. And I keep hammering away at the mining sector. There's probably 25 mines set to uh, go into production outside the Ring of Fire and. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe the spin-offs for oh. um, communities. Um, the natural gas that we're, we passed a resolution to help communities get natural gas. Who do you think is going to put in those furnaces and those Absolutely. pipes? That's going to be Thunder Bay uh, contractors. So those are the kinds of things we're really working at yeah. in the region as well. We can talk about that for the whole yeah. I noticed yeah. most of those Chinese guys are here. That's great. Yeah. And uh, good to hear that you're... Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're selling the city, you know, and that, cause that is your job. Yeah. Okay. Let's move to one of your favorite topics, the event center. Yeah. I think you're still, uh, interested as uh, at least eight people <laughs> on council are still interested in it. Yeah. So we, the prime minister came to town, um, um, kind of, I don't know if there was any he heads up on, he was dropping in. So, but anyway, he came in and <clears throat> he announced, you know, a transit, uh, uh, some transit funding. So, were you surprised or, of course, any funding is good funding, but were you sort of surprised? Well, it was a post-budget announcement, basically. There yeah. was no funding. The mayor of Sudbury phoned me the night before and oh. said the prime minister was just in Sudbury. He's on his way. He <laughs> me a check for $26.5 million and the province matched it, so he got $53 million in oh, his wow. hand. And I said, oh, great, I'm all excited. And then the prime minister came here and we got a post-budget announcement that there's going to be 1.5 billion for Ontario for. Did he tell you? Did he tell what 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 on the base share would might be? No, he Not didn't. He's and he said it's project based, but it's 50 cent dollars. So whatever dollars the feds put in, we only yeah. we have to match 50 cents, which is pretty good oh. because oh, yeah. normally it was one third, one third, one third. Yeah. 
So if it goes on a per capita basis, mm -hmm. we're going to get a good chunk of, of coin um, yes. for the city of Thunder Bay. But I anticipate that Toronto, the GTA, Ottawa will eat up a big chunk of that yeah. and we'll see what's left. I think we did day. defer a couple bucks. Did we defer those bus purchases? We uh, deferred one bus okay. at $300,000. So, I mean, that'll help. There's okay. Any money that you get from the feds is more than what we've got oh, in years. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, with the event center, I'm a little bit confused. So, do we have a formal application submitted for... in Because, you know, we had a change of government. The Conservatives had this, that, I think it was the Build Canada Fund or something like that. We had an application. No. How does that work? Do, do those programs get shut down? You got to start no. all over again? Well, we've just heard that the Building Canada Fund has 8 to $10 billion that wasn't spent. So we're definitely going after that. Uh, those funds, we're, mm -hmm. we're inquiring into that. We've been meeting with uh, Don Rusnak, who's a big proponent of the event center, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, uh, Minister Haidu, a little less uh, warm to the project because right. her priorities are social issues which are also ours, but I always maintain that you can't just look after roads, um, roads to where. I want roads to something and somewhere. Mm -hmm. I know that's your deal. Um, and I've always too. said that. And, and you take uh, the rendezvous uh, with the, um, the medical uh, rendezvous conference that happened in Thunder Bay a couple of years ago. We had scientists and doctors from all across mm -hmm. the world coming to Thunder Bay. They had to hold it in four hotels. It was a logistics nightmare. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, it would have been beautiful if we had an event center to hold us. We miss so much flying over Thunder Bay and driving past <coughs> us. And it's not just hockey. I keep telling people, hockey will be 30 games a year, 40 max a year. Mm -hmm. um, we need this facility for much more than hockey. Okay, so, uh, you know, now that we have, speaking of hockey, we have sort of um, have Plan B, LU, as the primary tenant. Um, and even have a plan C as well. You I have mean, a plan C, that's good. Well, yeah, that's you good. can't just have a plan A, I mean, you need a B, C, D. Yeah, yeah. So LU, you know, obviously, you know, I heard uh, on the news the other day, you know, they were saying, well, yeah, of course, you know, we'd like it, well, uh, an event center, well, I guess so. So when we could build a house for you, you know, you're going to say, sure, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But my question is, if LU is going to be the primary tenant, um, are they going to put some money, should they not be putting some money into the, into the uh, a new event center? or or I'll take it a step further. If it's going to be all you, why don't we let them build it? Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of possibilities. We're even looking at just building a hockey rink to play, or not a hockey rink, but an event center to replace the gardens. Um, I was in uh, Naples, Florida, looking at the uh, mm -hmm. Naples Center, and uh, it's a bowl that doubles as an event center, mm -hmm. and it's a hockey rink for an East, Co East Coast Hockey League team. Um, so definitely Lakehead University would have to have some skin in the game and yeah. we, we do have a business plan um, with LU alone and okay. um, our operating costs obviously are going to be higher than if we had an AHL team. Okay. Um, but if we just build a hockey rink or an event center without the convention portion, we can bring in a professional hockey okay. team. There's nothing that's so, good. So but, the, but the dementia for the city is going to be higher. Well, yeah. So you are still uh, interested in that professional hockey team you know idea i know you're a big hockey fan and yeah. my condolences to your Bruins. <laughs> thanks i'm also grieving i'm a canadians fan oh, so no. i'm grieving yeah. even more it's than been you. tough for us <laughs> but you're you know so and, and this is just my opinion um you know i'm a, I'm a avid hockey fan um i you know and when the first you know the when when the uh the news came out uh, in ahl team i was really excited but you really think we could support a professional hockey team in Thunder Bay? We, we, we need bums in the seats, Keith. Yeah, I realize that, and, and I really think we could. Good. I think this okay. is a great hockey town. I mean, look what, when we had hometown hockey here, we had 12,000 people at the waterfront, and the average, uh, Ron McLean told me, was 7,000. We live and breathe hockey in this but city. It, but it doesn't seem to translate into yeah. seats. Like, I, I went to the, the Fort Wayne Gardens uh, to watch some uh, Junior A playoffs recently. You know, three, four hundred people. We just don't seem to like to watch hockey. I know we like to celebrate it. Uh, yeah, hockey. Have you ever watched an NHL game, Frank? Well, no, and I agree. Oh yeah, the I a have, and it's like professional NHL. Oh, I agree. I agree. Just a step down. It, so. I agree. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be an upgrade. Yeah, totally. We've never seen anything like that hockey. Yeah, game. and I, I remember when the Thunder Cats, yeah. Colonial yeah. Hockey League, that was professional, and 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 you know, 
probably a step below the AHL even. Yes, but yeah. but you can see people. Yeah, I, I fully agree that an upgrade in the product would bring more people because yeah. uh, it would be. But I'm concerned yeah. that this just in general, people are but, getting yeah. tired of hockey. Not, not even, tired of even hockey. with a professional team. I, I keep reiterating to people that hockey will own, even be a part of the AHL team. Mm. Forty events a year. Okay. So we we relying on much more than that conferences, big trucks, the, the Briar, mm -hmm. uh, Sault Ste. Marie brought in the Briar, and it was an eight million dollar infusion into their economy. Mm -hmm. If you look what's happened in the downtown North Core, uh, just with what we've done with the waterfront, and I think I'm segueing into another yeah yeah that's perfect question here is um, our waterfront is vibrant. We had twenty five thousand for Canada Day, twelve thousand for mm -hmm. hometown hockey. We get eight to ten thousand nope. for the Blues mm -hmm. Fest. You're seeing restaurants open up. No our, doubt about it. People. One of our restaurants was recognized in the New York Times recently. It's huge. And um, that waterfront is putting us on the map. Yeah. Albeit the uh, private development is slow. Um, and I was really uh, chagrined in, in with all the liens and everything, but those are being cleared off and there's progress going to be made. It's never so going to be a perfect ride. Well, but we you're right. But you can't control that. No, no. And you're right. The, the, the people in Thunder Bay love their waterfront. Yeah. Um, and I commend the. the, the this council or the previous one that really got it going because it's it's a big project and I think people you know it's easy to criticize but you know everything's got to fall into place but and, and you're gonna make mistakes everyone's gonna be it's just about minimizing the mistakes and um, so my question about the waterfront is 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 about the stuff that's not finished yet mm -hmm. it's surprising that people are quite happy with what has been accomplished so far but when you look at it with, with a critical eye, you go, no hotel, um, the market square. I thought that was supposed to be a, a part of the big, you know, uh, people maybe not realize, but where those cars are parked, that's supposed to be a market square. Part of the plan, did they run out of money? What happened was um, for the last 15 months, uh, Resolve Group, uh, who's doing the private uh -huh. development, and we have no control. We signed the contracts with Resolve. Um, it's a private development, contractors yeah. get involved and the city has no control over liens put on. Mm -hmm. So there was a big issue with workmanship, another company came in, um, it was a mess. But after 15 months in the courts, they're on their way okay. now. So um, yeah, it's been very frustrating for us too and th those are things out of our control. But yeah. once it's all done, the market uh, you know, uh, square will be done, uh, the hotel will be put up. So you're confident um, about the hotel? I am. I'm very confident about it. Um, I'm confident that the art gallery is going to go down there. If we get the event center uh, down there, I'll tell you that's going to be a most vibrant place, and it's going to um, it's going to put Thunder Bay on the map. We're already on the map. That waterfront has won, I think, 14 or 15 Absolutely. international awards already okay. for yep. its architecture, and it's a place to go. And, and, and the train station we developed, but that is in the hands of the developer. So right. I'm thinking, you know, I, if I were, I know you, you, you don't need to comment on this, but if I'm looking at this project, I'm going, geez, I don't know, this developer, I don't know, I, I wish he would have, uh, they would have been a little bit more, um, um, you know, carry through with the, with the plan. I mean, because cause they, they've fallen really short, but we'll leave it at that. Well, we have two condo buildings up there now, and, and I'm hoping the hotel is going to be done. Um, but okay, let me talk about the hotel. If it's not done by, I think, because they've been deferring, deferring September. Now they say September we're going to start. If they don't start in September, I understand next year, some month next year, you can the city can buy it for a buck. So I'm hearing that we're going to see activity this in September. Summer, this, this, okay, summer, okay. this summer. So we'll see. Uh, well, at what point do we start to say, you know what? If it doesn't happen this summer, we're going to get this thing back. I'm, I'm sure you guys have must. must be talking amongst yourselves you know what are we going to do with this foundation because so, you're going to own yeah. a foundation and which is not a bad thing yeah. no no i mean there's because you could you know put it this way the uh the developer that's there now has sunk over three million dollars yeah. into this uh hotel already with the, the yeah. basement structure and what they've put up so far so uh, i can't see that i've heard this rumor out there that they're going to walk away. They're not going to walk away from three and a half, four but, million but, dollars. But Keith, but they, they've been saying, you know, well, we'll wait. So I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Well, I, the court court issues have just been dealt yeah, with. Yeah, so hopefully and that's yeah. been holding them back. And, yeah. you know, um, uh, and I know they've come to town. We're working on the plant, blah, 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 blah. But um, uh, we'll, hopefully it happens because I think the, the hotel would be a huge 
um, piece. It is. Because, you know, right. it was supposed to be first built, and then they kind of changed it a little bit. Well, let's do the whole So, developers, right? right. You know, the hotel gets built there, and that's the Marriott Delta, which is a very yeah. big okay. group of people. And, um, you know, you're going to bring people in. Uh, It'll be fantastic. Yeah, sure. But, again, if, and I want to <laughs> repeat myself, if we get that back, it's not the end of the world, right? No, there's We'll always... have a $3 million foundation. You could yeah. build something on that uh, or get another developer, hopefully. But we certainly can't leave it like that. It won't be left. Yeah, that. yeah. We have a plan. To <laughs> too, but... Okay. Another redevelopment of a park is, is we're starting to talk about it now. I went to the meeting, a um, uh, public input meeting, Patterson Park. So I go and I, I hear the, the, um, the uh, presentations from... Um, the consultant, what's their name? Brooks McElroy. Yeah. Beautiful, you know, three different configurations. They did the waterfront. Right? Yeah, they did the waterfront. I think they're on the payroll now, anyway, but anyway. Um, so, three different uh, configurations, beautiful, you know, very, very nice. And um, so I asked the question, okay, it was very nice, so, you know, what's this going to cost? And the consultant says, well, it's not really that important now. Well, it kind of is. important to me. It kind of is. I says, what, give us a ball. I have no idea what this is going to cost. Is it like a million bucks? Is it five million bucks? Is it two million? Is it under? I pressed him a little bit and finally said, well, it's over one, under five. So I'm going by the averages. Let's say it's three million bucks. The next day, I've never been in Patterson Park, believe it or not. I went and took a, went, stepped inside for the first time in my life. And, I, you know, I live on the side of town. And I looked around and I said, you know what? It's not a bad little park already, you know, like, so my question is, do we have to spend $3 million on redeveloping Patterson Park when the bones of the park, you know, they, they've taken down the wall, the, the, they have nice mature trees. I have a bias towards a found, mount, water fountain. I like water fountains. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple structure. Yeah. So my question is, do we have to spend $3 million? bucks? I don't think so, and I'm not happy with that figure, I'll tell you right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we should be spending that much. However, we want to revitalize the South Court. Um, you know, we've seen the new courthouse, the new DSAB building, the upgrades mm -hmm. to City Hall. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to Victoriaville, I, I want to rip the roof right off Victoriaville okay. and open up this street again. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the worst decisions made by any council was to build that Victoriaville and close off the street at Hurt Business. It killed the downtown. So, um, You're reading my notes because that's that's what we're gonna, I want to ask you next. So that's perfect. Okay. Keep keep going. Yeah. So um, I think that's a big part of the revitalization of the south. Get the businesses back here. Build nice parks. Um, when people are going to court or the court workers uh, mm -hmm. have a place to go and have their lunch, like you said, a nice fountain or a splash pad for kids yeah. or a skating rink. Some improvements have to be made, but you yeah. know, like, do we have to sort of go yeah, with I, the deluxe? I you agree know? that the price tag is high on this and, and I'm not happy and I am going to speak out about it okay. because I think we have to do this, but we have to do it um, in a fiscal responsible manner. You know, if we had unlimited funds, sure, three million there, mm -hmm. you know, go ahead. Yeah. But I hear we, you. I agree with you on that one. So, so the three million, what I'm saying is take that three million and use it to take down Victoriaville. Because Victoriaville is, is going to be, you know, it could be, you know, because I know this, this city's talked about, you know, it could be maybe eight million bucks. So uh, I'd rather allocate that money, but I agree with you 100%. Victoriaville, it needs a, a to urban be unclogged. Renewal. We need urban renewal yeah. here in the worst way. So, and we're working on that. And we have to work on the social issues as well. I mean, I was in this building a couple of weeks ago and um, intoxicated people laying in the snow banks and, and uh, just disgusts me. But again, we get no money from the feds. No. Um, you know, the federal budget, they gave $8.4 billion to First Nation people on reserve. How about municipalities are dealing with yeah. the social issues? There is nothing again for municipalities. Well, that's the job of our MPs, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we have to hold them to account for um, uh, that kind of um, funding. You know, that's their job. Mm -hmm. You know, they, that's, they, they, are, they should be, and I know they are, you know, our top salesmen when it comes to getting that money. And, and, and um, you know, we have to, when, when we see them, we have to ask them, say, okay, you know, what's going on here? Uh, uh, you know, you know sh because it is, you know, uh, a very difficult situation. And, and of course, it's difficult across the country, but I would say Thunder Bay, we're probably at the top of the list. One of the top hot spots, homelessness, uh, 15 people died, 15 Seven, homeless people died, or 17, I should horrible. say, last year, and Toronto had 29. That's horrible. Do the math. It's, just, it's disgusting. It's horrible. And, and municipalities shouldn't be left holding the bag for that. Yeah. Costco. 
Um, I can't really delve too much into mm -hmm. it, but the city has done everything in their power yeah. to get them here. It's, yeah. it's now between the developer and Costco. Yeah, that's so all you can do. Every week I'm waiting. I'm, I'm, they're, they're dickering right now over okay. a building and they are coming. It's just, it's agonizingly slow uh, in this business sometimes, but Costco... Well, and they're going to come on their own time. You they mean? are. They're going to come here. They're coming. They just came to Aurelia with, I mean, albeit that's in, in sort of the GTA yeah. north of Barrie, but... Um, yeah. It's 30,000 uh, population city, so they are coming here. I can guarantee you that just when it's up to their yeah. timing. The bridge. Now, I know it's in the courts. I know um, uh, any comments on the bridge? Uh, all I can say is we won the first round. Um, we're, we're supposed to have access. Our engineers uh, are supposed to have access to that bridge. Um, so far, we haven't had access to that bridge, so we may have to go back to the judge and Oh, okay. get him to be a little more forceful. I'm hoping that we don't have to go that route. He awarded us costs, so it hasn't cost us any money, uh, yet. Any money yet. We're hearing that the uh, trial date will be coming up uh, this year, and um, that's not going to be a long protracted trial, so we're hoping that the judge will make a great decision on that one. It's been very frustrating. Now, Fort William First Nations, they're entertaining an offer from the government for um, um, uh, a land... Um, yeah, land claim. Uh, land claim. Um, and if they accept it, then they'll have to decide you know, what to do with it. So I've, I've heard a couple of comments from some um, uh, people, uh, that leadership in, in that area that they're talking, well, why don't we you know, build a bridge? So uh, do you see that maybe happening, the city uh, and Fort William First Nations getting together and building a bridge? If, um, well... If, if the court case comes out and it says, you know, against us, that might have to be an option. But do you see that happening in the future? Um, you know, that's always a possibility. There, there should always be plans B and C. Mm. And um, what Fort William First Nation does with that $100 million, $99 million mm. is entirely up to them. We Absolutely. Um, so if they want to spend that on the bridge, I, I wouldn't uh, sneeze at that. Yeah. Definitely, but um, I still maintain that that 1905-1906 agreement with uh, Fort William He's and um, it was Grand Trunk Railroad back mm -hmm. then and CN now, uh, that they uh, have a duty to fix that bridge and maintain it in perpetuity and that's the argument we're putting before the court. So I'm going to be surprised if we lose that case. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yes, it's taking a long time, but that's the court system. Mm -hmm. Again, that's out of our hands now and yeah. into the courts. Um, but you know, we uh, just repaired a road in, on Fort Rowland First Nation because we had an obligation because of the Loch Lomond water system. We honored our uh, commitment uh, mm -hmm. under that agreement and we built that road for them even though we're not using Loch Lomond anymore. So you know, we're in good faith. But we're, we're negotiating with Fort William uh, on land issues right now and um, so stay tuned. Because I think the, the, that alternative route on Highway 61 that's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, you know, I, you know, hopefully nothing happens, but it's just not safe. You know what I mean? Uh, but people have to learn to, to drive. drive. Well, I know. To, I know. You know, I'll, I'll tell right, you, as yeah. a former copper, I saw it. Thunder Bay has got some of the best drivers. <laughs> they just anyway. I'd like to thank you very much yeah, for uh, my pleasure. Uh, coming in. Hopefully, we'll be able to do this again. Yeah, definitely. And um, want to thank you again for for getting back to me so quickly and and accepting my uh, invitation so um, thank you for watching my name is Frank Scarcello and uh, you've been watching Frank conversations at, on Thunder Bay Live thank you mm -hmm.